All right, here we go. Today we have a baseball legend in the building. Three-time World Series winner, nine-time All-Star. Daryl Strawberry, welcome to Vlad TV. Vlad TV, thank you. It's good to be with you. <laughs> long time, long, long, long time fan of you, man. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, I appreciate it. I appreciate you guys having me on. So uh, thank you for you know being a long time fan. I appreciate that too, my brother. And I just got to say, at 62 years old, you look great. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, yeah, it's just living right, taking care of yourself, eating healthy. Uh, you know, of course, life has always have its challenges for everybody. And, um, you know, from a physical standpoint, mental standpoint, emotional standpoint. But I've been able to regroup and put it all back together and, and, and live that right journey and, and wake up every day feeling healthy. I mean... Of course, I have the aches and pains from um, a long career and the physical part of it is all there, you know, the knees, the shoulders, back, you know, you go through that whole process. Well, yeah, man, we should all be so lucky to be 62 years old, to look as great as you, in shape, great skin, you know, I'm telling you, man, congratulations, because as we get older, it's very important to take care of ourselves, and you've definitely done it. It is. It truly is important for us to take better care of ourselves, you know, as we get older. Because you, when you're young, you know, you're very vulnerable and you don't have to worry about a lot of different things. And, and so when you get up in age, you start looking and you look in the mirror, it's like, oh, crap, man. You know, I better keep myself together here. You know, I'm getting a little heavy here and there. I just remember a few years back, you know, it was, got a little heavy. You know, when I first moved to St. Louis, you know, they feed all that heavy food and kind of blows you up. And I was like, this is not going to work, you know. And I was out of breath a lot playing golf and stuff. And couldn't tie my shoe half of the time, breathing hard. So I, I realized that, you know, I had to cut back on some of the heavy eating. Yep. Well, congratulations on turning it all around. <laughs> well, it's your first time here. I want to start in the very, very beginning. Uh, so you grew up in Crenshaw. I did. I grew up in Southern California, uh, South Central. Uh, went to Crenshaw High. You know, a lot of people come to California these days and proclaim that they uh, grew up and know about Crenshaw High and, and, and growing up in, in those neighborhoods. But I actually grew up in those neighborhoods and had to walk to school every day. Um, you know, grew up a, around the gang ac activity that was all around us and everything. And, then, you know, it was a really decision and choice that you have to make in those neighborhoods. Uh, do you hit the streets or uh, do you go to school and you participate in what school has for you and the opportunity? So... I made a decision, a conscious decision, you know, to go to school. Uh, you know, I had a lot of friends that went the other way and went to the streets and gangs and everything. Uh, most of them are probably not living today because of that choice. Uh, but I had the same choice, but I, I went to school and I wanted to play sports, you know, and I got involved with a lot of sports in high school, you know, baseball, football, and basketball. I tried a little bit of everything. And um, it just kept me solid, kept me in a solid foundation and kept me in a direction that I needed to go in to stay focused if I really wanted to do something, if I really wanted to get out of the neighborhood. I mean, there's a ticket out of the neighborhood and it was always about school and sports to get out because most of the time when you grow up in the ghetto, it's not like that. You know, the challenges are, are real. And I think a lot of people don't understand that. And they think, well, people come from those places are just bad people. No, they're not bad people. You know, it's the environment that we grow up in. And, and, and we learn the habits from growing up in that environment and, and you become a part of it or you decide to make a decision uh, to do something else for yourself. Well, you talked about in your book in the 70s that, you know, you were growing up in, in Crenshaw, but it wasn't like boys in the hood Crenshaw. You know, you said everyone's mom and dad were working. All the kids went to school. You know, there was some drugs and violence, but not really where you lived. Well, it hadn't really increased until after I got a little bit older. Um, and I think that's when the violence started to come. I think that's when, you know, the gangs from each side started to, you know, have this feud towards each other, you know, and the, and the challenges towards each other. And, and it's unfortunate, you know, because, you know, I always think about it. It's just, it's just a black on black crime, you know, and we don't really ever talk about the importance of who we are as people and, you know, we have our young people that come against each other and fight against each other. And you wish, you know, a lot of them would go in this different directions and learn to come together and believe in each other because the gift, the gifts that they have down inside of them down there, so many of them, they got so many talents and gifts that they can use. And I think you don't really 
realize that until you actually step away from a lot of that stuff, and, which is hard, which is hard to do. Don't get me wrong, everybody think it's just an easy journey and you're able to just step away from it. And that is not true. It's a very hard thing for young kids at the age of 14, 15 years old to make a decision uh, which road that they're gonna take.